My name is David Lafon, and like Jonathan said, I'm the CIO or CTO and CISO at Cyber Warrior. I wear a few different hats. Uh, I've been in the cybersecurity related space for 20 plus years, worked for companies like Amazon, Etsy, Dow Jones, worked on some big, big projects, worked on some small projects. I worked uh, with cybersecurity related concerns for, like I said, 20 years, but cybersecurity and the term has not been around that long. So you know, I remember maybe 20 years ago or 25 years ago working on a website when that website was defaced and folks couldn't believe that was the case. They thought maybe the file upload process had a bug, right? Uh, it turned out that someone actually broke into the website. Uh, it was a Microsoft website at the time, broke into that website and you know changed the content on the website. And a lot of people just couldn't understand that. Subsequently, I've done all kinds of different things and worked on some very interesting projects, even related to the dark web. So happy to hear to talk to you about pen testing. Little rules of the road. So I can't usually watch the chat and talk uh, or speak at the same time. So if someone can help me with that, Jonathan or Clara, that'd be great. Yep. Um, happy to answer any question anyone sort of wants. Uh, typically, it's pretty good. Even if you want to ask the question, just type it in the chat this way. So we have a way of you know, keeping track of those things and I don't miss someone's request uh, and and we'll go from there. I'm trying to, I would try to get done by 1230, 1235 and hopefully leave a lot of opportunity for people to ask questions. Okay, so here we're going to talk about pen testing. A pen test is pretty, pretty well known, right? Uh, I think in today's world, I don't know if everyone knows exactly what it is, but it's short for penetration testing. The goal is really for an organization, and there's a misunderstanding, but the real goal of penetration testing is to um, provide an environment safely um, or under some safe constraints where an attacker or a simulated attacker will try and gain access to a network, an application, or also it could be like just trying to get access to a building, right? Uh, I see, you know, Matthew there, you have a building behind you. Right, and that could be a hotel or a convention center. It might be locked up at night, but someone might know that there's expensive equipment in there. They might want to find a way to break into that building. I've heard and also contracted myself individuals to come in and do simulated pen tests for access to buildings. Right, so this is kind of like a wide, wide conversation in regards to pen testing, but we're going to get into more simplistic um, understanding in this presentation. And you can look up here on the slide, right? I'm not typically a slide reader, uh, but the key point is to simulate real world cyber attacks. And then, you know, I mentioned a building access, but the cyber attack component is typically to manipulate access to a cyber managed building access system, right? So you have this physical component and cyber component in one. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, you know, it sort of has a wide breadth, so it could be automated uh, with software applications, could also be performed manually. Uh, there's many different ways you can go about this. And why do you do this? Well, primarily you're trying to, if you're doing it in a, in a positive way, you're trying to identify vulnerabilities. Uh, you're also trying to get an assessment of general security posture. In some cases, you might just be doing compliance requirements, right? <clears throat> in other cases, you know, you're trying to prepare for incident response uh, events, right? How well does your team respond if you have a cyber attack? How well does your team respond if someone got access to a building or a sensitive room in a building? In other regards, you might be a very proactive company and you're trying to do some proactive risk mitigation. <clears throat> when should you perform? Uh, penetration tests. You know, there's all different schools of thoughts on on when, you know, frequency. I've been in companies where we've hired pen testers and they're doing penetration tests, application level penetration tests weekly. In other cases, you might have a compliance requirement. You do it once a year. I don't think that really gets um, much value for individuals. I'm not saying don't do it, but if you perform it once a year, if our 
you know, if I was the one in, in shoes doing the pen test, I'd be really concerned. How secure am I the other 364 days out of that year? Right? No environment is static for 364 days, whether that's people, whether that's technology or other things involved. You know, so I get a little concerned if you're really just trying to meet the minimum requirements, right? And there's other things. If you're in PCI, I think PCI, which is related to credit card, they require after significant changes to your application or infrastructure. Um, you could want to do it after a security incident. That's sort of a little bit too late. Uh, you could do it on a regular basis, like I said, weekly, or even maybe it's part of your software development life cycle and you're doing it before deployment. You might have a way to automate a pen test and then that gets you to a certain level of comfort and someone manually could do a couple other things to optimize that schedule so that you can have an effective coverage, right? Pen testing is really a coverage tool for the security of your infrastructure, your application, or whatever else you can apply that to. Who forms it? <clears throat> you can do it internally, you can get it outsourced, you can do it yourself. Um, there's all different ways you can sort of carry this out. Um, but the main goal here is to aim, uh, you're, you're aiming to, identify vulnerabilities, if you can identify them, maybe you can put a place a mitigation plan to either correct those vulnerabilities or you maybe have to acquire other technology to mitigate those vulnerabilities. Or maybe you're just like, this application is just not ready for prime time yet. And do we really want to put it up in, on the internet knowing that our auth authentication scheme might be weak, right? Or should we put this firewall in place um, knowing that the configuration might not be 100%, right? So there's all different sort of thinking you can go through for why you would do a pen test. And then you would, once you understand your why, you can think about who should you contract or who should carry out such testing. Ideally, <clears throat> you want to train cybersecurity professional, right? Ideally, you're sort of looking for someone who's done this before. And ideally, maybe they could give you a couple valuable use cases that either show you that they're good at this, you know, good at this skill, um, or, you know, you just maybe happen to know by word of mouth that someone else has had a lot of success working with a lot of different individuals. I've contracted and run a lot of cyber, uh, pen tests, and I can tell you there's different types and there's different levels and there's different skilled individuals to carry out pen tests. It's up to you to determine that. Obviously, cost will be a factor. Time will be a factor. Anything of that regard. Uh, but pen testing, it's, it's a pretty, it's a much wider category of a skill in cybersecurity than people are typically aware. So what types do you have? Well, one is you have a black box type pen test. Another, you have a gray box type pen test. Another, you have a white box. You could have automated manual and there's many other. In the conversation of black, gray, or white, really that relates to is how much information are you sharing with that entity doing the test? Do they know anything about your infrastructure? Do they know anything about your application? Have you scoped the pen test to a specific group of IP addresses, to a different location, to a specific application, to a specific component of an application? I can tell you why working for Amazon and other e-commerce type companies, we would contract pen testers to do even a pen test, which could be a weak engagement on a very small component of our application. Why? Maybe there was a sensitive piece of that application that you wanted to validate, or maybe you were just thinking, well, if I could really look deep into this part and break up my frequency of pen testing, I wouldn't, or I, the manager who is contracting this pen test, I wouldn't be too concerned about missing something if I bucketed the whole application together. I could carve up the application and carve up the scope of the engagement to be more effective and targeted to help achieve um, maybe better outcome. Better outcome would be to find more vulnerabilities. And I can tell you, every environment's got risks. Every environment's got vulnerabilities. It's just a matter of, can you find them? Some people have done a really good job of finding pen testers that uh, discover 
high value vulnerabilities that you want to correct. Other people I've seen reports, I've never, you know, from a company, never seen a medium or low. But then if I took a look at and I understand their infrastructure, I do know they have high and critical risks that they need to address. Uh, and we'll learn a little bit more about that in this discussion. Any questions thus far? We talked about regulations. Here's a slide on regulations. Does anyone in this webinar um, have to perform pen testing to meet specific regulatory or framework requirements? As a hospital, we have to perform pen testing to comply with HIPAA. Right. That's an easy one, right? No doubt. Uh, you'll see other requirements here, you know, something like a GDPR, uh, PCI, HIPAA, although HIPAA is spelled incorrectly, we'll correct that. Um, ISO 27000, SOC 2. You can't get a SOC 2 report without a pen test, right? Uh, whether you get a type 1 or type 2, it's just, just a standard requirement. Does anyone work in an environment where their customers require regular penetration testing and that they have to share? You don't have to share the details with me on this report. I'm sorry, on this meeting, but they are required to share with their customers the success or uh, risks associated with those pen tests. If you have customers, a lot of day, a lot of times nowadays, people are asking for that, and they want to know if you're doing them. They will actually see the report to see if actually you're you're diligent in not only um, hiring a, a good company to do it but also you have diligence in mitigating or correcting whatever comes of that report. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is sort of a forward looking approach. So if you have that case and you're actively doing pen tests, um, you, you're sort of like ahead of the game, but you're really not ahead of the game because these requirements are there. And most industries are requiring them even if people aren't performing penetration tests, uh, the, the sort of risk you run in an environment where you're not able to get the budget, you're not able to sort of contract someone, you don't have that skill, whatever the challenge you have, the risk you have is that if there's a breach, one of the first questions they're gonna ask is, okay, we're helping you get fixed up. Can you tell us if you know any of your vulnerabilities or risks? Have you had it tested? Do you do that internally? Or have you done that uh, do you have an external vendor who's provided you a report? Why? Because there's a lot of liability that's going to come from a ri oh, sorry from a, a breach. And the first thing someone's going to say is, are you proactive? If you're not proactive in making sure your infrastructure, your application, or your systems are well or reasonably protected, that's that's going to point out significant weakness in company process. And you'll see here on the right, there's some, some dollar bills flying around, right? <clears throat> and it's a good way, obviously, to double check that your systems are configured correctly. Uh, you have the right security measures in place. And maybe you've gotten advice or consultation from an outside party to assess your methodology and how you approached protecting your infrastructure. Okay. It's also a good way to keep up your company reputation. Anyone ever heard of this thing called security scorecard? There's a thing out there that's monitoring people's infrastructure that's publicly available. It's called security scorecard. And there's a few of them type environments. They're looking to uh, set up a system of company reputation. Insurance companies, they will subscribe to security scorecard because they want to get an independent assessment to some degree, how well some company is is protecting or, um, you know, have in place their security to make sure things are well protected. You know, this stuff happens. This stuff is out there. It's happening if you don't even know it, right? Um, more so, if you have customers, if you're not doing penetration testing, you have no external validation or internal validation that your protections are 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 effective. And it's likely your customers or your business associates or who you're working with might not be 100% trustworthy in sharing their information with you, right? So um, <clears throat> sure enough, you got to get a pen test to achieve certain accreditation. 
But even if you don't try to achieve that accreditation, a pen test helps you upkeep or maintain your company reputation. Okay, we talked about this already, scoping. Scoping is important for pen tests. It's important for HIPAA. It's important for PCI. It's important for any regulatory requirements. It's important for if you happen to have government uh, you know, requirements or regulations you're trying to sort of uh, meet or maintain. So whether you're doing all your external IP addresses, that could be your scope. Whether you're doing external, all your internal IP addresses, that could be your scope. Whether you focus on just the internal IP addresses, that could be your scope. Whether you focus on just the location and the associated infrastructure at that location, that could be your scope. Whether you're focused on one or many different applications within your environment or many different components of that application, that's what we talk about in regards to scope. And it's important. So when you contract or try and work with a pen tester, they know how to, number one, estimate the effort to perform that test. And you might be asked if you have an application, uh, how many web pages or how many functions does this application perform? Uh, you might be asked a whole bunch of other questions and so that that skilled individual can put together a scope of work to meet your scope, right? Um, so that you know with yourself and that party doing that pen test, uh, what are <clears throat> the parameters you can work under to perform a successful test, but also not just to perform the test, but you could sort of also specify what do you want to have tested as a result of that exercise or engagement. And we call that the rules of engagement, when you would perform the test, how you would perform the test, what tools someone might include in part of the test, what part of your test could be manual, what part of your test could be automated. That's scoping. And it goes, farther than that all right so steps to perform a pen test you can <clears throat> choose many different uh frameworks to work under uh not really going to cover each one in here in this meeting in depth but here are some examples if you happen to work with web applications the most common framework that's going to be used, that's up, this framework is updated every couple of years, is what they call the OWASP top 10 or the OWASP testing framework. And there's actually, if you go to OWASP.org, you can learn about this open web application security project and all the um, framework components that they've developed to support and explain to the public how to perform an application pen test. They actually can tell you the specifics, give you checklists, educate you on what the risks are and, and take it that much further, right? And there's other <clears throat> standards or frameworks here. Uh, NIST, that's the, the government standard um, and the other ones that are mentioned uh, for above. You can take a screenshot of this if you like and look into it on your own. But again, I think we just don't have the time to go into every little detail of each one, but feel free to, you know, do some research on your own. There's a thing called Google. It's actually a pretty reliable and 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 useful tool. I'm sure you've type type into Google some of these words. It'll direct you to do some further research. So what do we? Well, you know, five key steps. You know, we talked about a lot of things around pen tests. The first part is planning. Second part is a, a analysis of vulnerabilities or an assessment of vulnerabilities. Maybe the next step. Uh, that you engage, the individual might be, hey, we really want you to try and exploit what you found. And typically during that process, you're going to want to make sure that you don't do it during a time that could bring a system down and affect all your staff. You want to make sure that, you know, if that could occur, you you set, uh, specify other parameters like, hey, if you find something, let us know right away. If you access our network. Um, and then the next typical step, you know, I mentioned you might want to get some urgency out about the exploitation phase or post exploitation phase. You, you know, typically a pen tester will produce document and reporting and then, you know, follow up with some communication and debrief, whether that's internal or external. Even if it's an internal person performing the test, you're going to want to have a client debrief. You could have a pen testing team 
and they debrief with your development team. You could have a pen test team and they del- they debrief with your desktop support team. Um, they, you may also debrief with your software development team or your infrastructure team, right? So these are the typical five steps that are included in a, a typical penetration test exercise. <clears throat> um, we're going to go through this quick and then I'm going to wrap up. So planning, scope, rules of engagement, information gathering, right? Um, pretty straightforward. Vulnerability analysis, you're going to scan and try and find things that look uh, like you could look a little bit deeper on them. A lot of that could be automated. Some of it could be manual. You're going to do some exploitation. Some of this could be automated. There are a lot of advanced tools that could do automated exploitation. Uh, some of it could be manual, you know, exploiting vulnerabilities or known vulnerabilities. Um, you might have a custom application. So you might have a manual exploit that um, through your web application, the tester is able to gain a higher level of privilege or perform a function that's not readily available to every user or not expected to be available to every user. And, and other things like persistence and lateral movement, uh, which are other advanced cybersecurity um, methodologies. And then in the final stage, sorry, not the final stage, but um, in the fourth stage, uh, you get a report, right? They got a detailed report, findings, possible mitigation strategies, um, next steps, right? And maybe sit, once you get that report together, you'll sit down with an individual or a group of individuals, depending on what you contracted, and say, hey, how can we go about this? Or you might even, you know, you might have a situation where you're, you're really buttoned up. And the pen tester says, hey, you did a great job, right? We did all this testing. Uh, let me give you a little perspective on what was performed, how we went about it, what we could or couldn't find. Here's a, some, some details that validate uh, you're really strong in regards to your cybersecurity posture, or you might have some other mitigation to perform. And depending on the level of test and the skill of that individual, usually you're gonna find something. Okay, here's some tools that a pen tester might use, some automated tools, Nmap, Metasploit, Burp Suite, Wireshark, SQL Map. These are sort of a lot of open source available tools. There's a lot of commercial tools as well. <clears throat> uh, something else like a Hydra with helps with password cracking, Netcat, Aircrack, GoBuster, and maybe you know you you, you leverage a social media and social engineering toolkit. Um, to you know, for the example that I gave, trying to gain access to a building. I remember a long time ago, someone took, we did a pen test and we hired this person to come on site. They gained access to the building, which they shouldn't have because of the security system. Then they were able to put a USB device in a, an administrator's computer and was able to um, sniff and capture administrative passwords, right? So um, the stuff is kind of real. I also remember... <clears throat> float around on the internet people used to share a uh, power strip that you know a device looked just like a power strip what actually was a wi-fi so somebody slipped it into an office they left the power strip no one thought any different about it but then people were connecting to this wi-fi because it was similar to the one that existed and it was a lot of man in the middle and other type of attacks that they could perform because they had control of the network Okay, here's average salary for a pen tester. Good skill. Um, in mo- in many places, you can get much much higher than this average salary, but um, depending on your level of certification, your industry, uh, the type of company that you're working for, uh, according to Indeed, we're talking about one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year, and that's pretty good for an average salary. Here are some other additional resources that might relate to. Um, you know, pen test or someone helping you, you know, it's sort of another level of pen testing is called tabletop exercises. Um, you know, something like the MITRE ATT&CK framework, which is listed here, helps you to dive deep into the combination of these testing exercises, um, you know, to help increase, the goal is to help increase awareness around cybersecurity, but also giving you a framework to address cybersecurity. And like anything else is, it's great that you have it, but if you don't test it, it's like the car that might be outside 
uh, and you never, you never start the battery once in a, you know, the car once in a while, the battery might die. So you don't want to leave your cybersecurity posture low. And that day you go out to pl plow your driveway, the battery in your Jeep is dead. Well, it's going to be really hard for you when the snowfall and you try to rush to the store to get another battery. And in the middle of the cold weather, trying to change that battery, it's sometimes better to be prepared, even though the snow might be delayed to fall on the ground or the snow might not show up this winter, right? Having good preparation and exercising your plans in a regular manner. Uh, part of that is performing pen testing is really good for your cybersecurity posture. Some other resources, uh, here is a report, the DFIR report, um, sort of like, you can find other ones. This talks about in-depth reports on real world cyber intrusions. You could go to CISA's website as well and find information about additional things, whether it be tactics, techniques, and procedures. And you'll find that on the MITRE website, uh, which we just covered. Any questions? I think we're done. Thanks, sir. thanks, David, very much. There was a um, just a couple of comments that IBM X Force is also a great resource for live threats. Um, th there were some great comments in, in, in the chat about about who uses what, et cetera. Um, the, to the to the question about uh, making this available, if you were to, if you email us at Clara, what's the best email contact at Cyber Warrior? Correct that one. Use contact at cyberwarrior.com um, and we will share the recording with you. We won't, we, we can't share the actual slide deck with you, uh, but we will share this recording with you. Um, but but please email us uh, to, to, to do that. Um, question, how do you learn how to create an effective pen testing report? Is there a roadmap, predefined templates, a framework, David? Yeah, so there's some readily available resources for that. That's a typical, another webinar we cover. We also cover it much more depth in our bootcamp, um, but there's readily available resources to create that report, uh, depending if you are an existing pen tester already, or if you're looking to understand what might be in that report. Uh, we could follow up with you directly about that, but we typically cover that in another webinar, um, if you would like to join that as well. Hey, hey David, I've got a question. Um, <clears throat> For the pen test, for the skill sets that you that you outlined in in a few slides back, uh, on in terms of how to effectively execute on a pen on a pen test or a series of different pen tests, um, to learn these skills, how many hours of 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 curriculum review, uh, you know, educational experience would would someone typically need? to not necessarily master these skills, but, but to be able to, to effectively execute on those skills. Do you have a sense? Well, it's hard to say. So there's, you know, in any, in any industry, you have um, entry level, you have, you know, sort of not, not that experience. You have middle of the road intermediate experience. You might have advanced experience, and then you might have a much higher level of experience above advanced, which is, excuse me, typically referred to as sort of like a staff level type individual. I can tell you that even a staff or highest level pen tester is constantly learning about new techniques, tactics, or things uh, that they need to sort of incorporate into their testing methodology because <clears throat> cybersecurity changes every day. Um, while there's standard things that people look for, uh, the world is constantly changing. And I'll go back to my reference in regards to a uh, web application. Uh, when I worked for Etsy, we were deploying 38 application changes or so, something to that regard, 38 changes a day. That's a lot of changes to a web application. So in my mind, as if I'm in the security department, I'm gonna wanna know what has changed um, on each, each launch or each, each push. If you don't keep track of those changes and you don't have any visibility into the change in your cyber posture, you could make a change to your application that could release access, and this has happened, they're public things. You might change the configuration of 
maybe some access to an S3 bucket in AWS that makes files that are sensitive public. And that's not something that you want to go leave untested, right? Um, you want to make sure that you have a process. If you're going to change those components or other components like that of your, infra your infrastructure, or your application environment or your stack, that you, you're aware of those changes and that you're going to have visibility into those changes and verify that changes uh, are not only made correctly, but they're enforced after they're made. And that in involves a, a lot of experience and <clears throat> a, a large in-depth amount of testing and planning so it's hard to answer your question. I think no, I haven't found many two companies that are 100% alike. Otherwise, they would not have a competitive advantage. So I would say it's different for every company. Okay. Um, in the chat, there's a question. What's your opinion regarding black box pen testing versus white box pen testing? So that's a good point. And I left that, I didn't want to address it directly. But since you asked this question, Mikhail, I think that's Mikhail, right? Can you uh, yeah. tell us what the difference between black box testing and white box testing is? Or can anybody help us with that, with an explanation of white box testing and black box testing? The black box, you usually approach it without knowing anything at all about the environment. And then white box, you have clear visibility on the source and on the target. You, you might even have more in regards to white box testing. You might actually have access to see the code that runs the application, right? You might even have access to the configuration for the target. I think black box testing would be hard if you have zero information because you wouldn't have anything to test, right? So in that case, you might have a minimal amount of information like an IP address or, some, or a name of an application or something to that effect. But I agree, that is a great explanation. I appreciate that. So in regards to my opinion, uh, like everything else in the world, the answer is it depends. So number one is, my opinion is, if you have the money to do it more advanced testing, you should invest in more advanced testing. If you do not have the budget to invest in very advanced testing, then you should try and take uh, an approach to do simplified, more simplified testing, at least to have some coverage whatsoever. And you could take that... Um, understanding and build a different matrix for both white and black box testing. It's really not cut and dry. It depends on your situation. And if you have any further questions specifically, I'm happy to talk about that or Jonathan, you can send an email to Jonathan or Clara and we can get you some advice in that regard. Um, we've got two, two connected questions that I'm actually gonna take. Um, what steps would you recommend to someone start looking to start a career in pen, pen testing? Um, we actually, this is going to sound self-serving, but it it, it is self-serving. Um, we actually have a, a, a very strong pen testing course uh, that we that we offer. Um, if you send us your email, um, we can give you a schedule of the next time that course will be taught. It'll be taught as part of a of, of a broader boot camp. But if you're just interested in pen testing, we can um, we we can we can give you that instruction, and you can come into the to the to the program just for that. For that um, for that curriculum, which is a, a three week class, um, we teach the Pen Test Plus, which is a CompTIA exam. Uh, it is a very strong entry level certification. It cuts across a variety of different pen testing skills, um, and 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 that would be the class that we would we would share the schedule uh, for you with, with you. Um, and again, just send us an email or put it in here to the chat, and Clara will get you the specific schedule of. Of when the next probably two pen testing classes are 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 being held, uh, and we're we're happy to help you with that. Yeah, getting back to that original question about um, where do you go and the different types of jobs that are available in cybersecurity, there's a readily available website cyberseek.org, and you can ask us. You can reach out to our team, Jonathan, Clara, or myself, or they can get you some. Uh, you know, they they can help reach me. If I'm not readily available, you can find my LinkedIn profile online. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty public, but you could go to cyberseek.org. And I just went there rather quickly. Uh, you go to the homepage. If you want to learn more about penetration and vulnerability testing, you can click on that, that, um, that bubble. And that bubble takes you into all these different sort of pathways that you can think about to become a pen tester. 
It also gives you perspective if you're looking to hire a pen tester and, and you want to sort of understand or think about the questions to ask them to validate their capabilities. Like, well, if I'm looking for all these different, uh, if I'm looking for a pen test, I should think about this person needs to know about networking, right? These feeder roles, networking, software development, systems engineering, financial risk analysis, security intelligence, or IT support. Um, because if they are only focused on one of these areas, then the scope of my pen test should be only limited to the area of expertise that they provide. However, if you look at the broaden your scope or hopefully get some more uh, a broad results from your pen test exercise, you can go to here to sort of understand what's involved with the skills uh, and the effort required to be an effective pen tester, or at least even an effective pen test report reader, right? Because part of the exercise is to produce this test in a report, but if you don't have the skill to read the report, um, it's going to be hard to sort of improve the security posture of your organization if you can't take the report and put those recommendations into action. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, the the other the uh, just to again thank you David the, to go back to the other question the other class that um, we offer in addition to teaching to pen test plus is we offer a two week program on vulnerability management um, both classes are um, Monday through through Friday um, from five thirty p.m. to nine thirty p.m. East Coast time um, the the classes will not overlap so there's no 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 com competition for the for those schedules. But vulnerability management is a, a, a very in-depth class to give you the the the, the practical application around um, pen testing theory. Uh, and I would encourage you, uh, people interested in, in in learning pen testing to consider both vulnerability management and and uh, understanding pen test plus and, and taking that 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 certification from CompTIA. And and when and if you if you go through us, um, the tuition would for pen test plus would include. Uh, both the curriculum and the and the exam voucher, but you'll get more details on that uh, if if you were to uh, e email and, and interact with Clara, as I think some of you are now. Other questions? Nothing. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. A... Go ahead. Yeah, you can ask question. So uh, I've been I've worked in the past as a what about pen testing, but I find it like uh, limiting in terms of like improving my skill set. So I focus on one area, and I was thinking, what would you recommend um, outside of training and certification to try to get a real world experience to do it outside of work since I can't find it while I'm working? So I, I have. I guess a follow-up question to your point is, can you explain the area of web application pen test you are focused on? Um, well, I think it's just generalized web app pen testing. So any kind of a web app that's uh, being developed where we have a requirement to do a pen test. So we'll do, we'll conduct a scan and then we'll look at each individual issue and then we'll do like a manual overview of the application, find vulnerabilities and request remediation. Sometimes we have to assist with remediation. And... Okay. Uh, and how would you category, categorize your level of skill in regards to the knowledge of web application pen testing and the tools that you're using to carry that out? Because I think what you just described is what we went over in this webinar in regards to how to carry out an app, a pen test, right? Yeah. So we haven't done, I haven't done personally any kind of network pen testing, although I know that's a part of our program. Um, so I haven't actually gone after like servers or network environments. I just focus on web apps. Uh, I would say my skill level is like an amateur level. Um, so I've been doing it for four or five years. Okay. Uh, and I said web apps very well, but I haven't really gone deeper than that. So I just want to pull this website up real quick uh, since we're talking about that and just in the contents of what you're saying. Uh, let me see if I can get that. And I, I can probably answer your question a little bit better. But OWASP is basically the go-to um, framework or understanding of how to ca carry out a web application pen test. 
you'll see here in this 2017 to 2021 mapping where OWASP set um, or reset the top 10 web application security risks. There are many more than just the top 10 that are focused here, but I think you would probably agree um, with me that it's it's a big exercise on to to perform a web application pen test depending on the size of, and complexity of your infrastructure. But you see here on the right, uh, some of the things that are most important for testing web applications and scoping that web application pen test are broken access control, uh, cryptographic failures, injection, and I could conclude a lot of them, whether that be a SQL injection or anything um, anything that could cause, like you have HTTP injection, you can have authentication injection, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, you could sort of have this concern of insecure design and you'll see that's new. It's just new because it's a new term. It's not new because it's a new issue. They refactor or reprioritize the list of the top 10 to help people focus on uh, performing these tests and also prioritize you know, findings from these tests or prioritize mitigation. So my recommendation to you is, since you already have some exposure into number nine, or maybe you don't, security logging and monitoring failures, that's an infrastructure type OWASP concern, is I would work with your team to start to learn a little bit more about that specific uh, risk, A09, security logging and monitoring failures. And then learn a little bit more about from there, say, hey, um, can I learn a little bit more about the systems related to security logging and monitoring? On one side, you'll have application. On another side, you're going to have operating system and networks. So it might be a way to sort of, through your organization, find a path into learning more about um, system or network type pen testing. And of course, go to, you know, like a company like Cyber Warrior or take some outside courses that'll help you understand networking, that'll help you dive into all the other areas about pen testing and cybersecurity so that you can expand your knowledge base. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? I think we have 10 minutes left. Yeah, uh, David, in the chat, there's a question from Jay Karaberg. Kevin. Different areas okay. of pen testing. Uh, is that for David Lafon? Sure. Yeah. So the question here is, let me just repeat it for everyone, is we talked about different areas. I appreciate you listening and pointing that out. Great. Uh, which area would you say is the most common? And should you specialize in a certain area or should you go after them all? What is the most attractive form? Um, what is the most attractive? Attractive. I'm going to say, what what is the most attractive um, type of pen tester to hire, right? Um, I guess it depends. The answer is another, and this is hopefully not taken as a lame answer, but it's true, is it sort of depends. Typically, people will sort of get involved in one area and decide if they like it or not. If you do like it, you'll want to learn more about it. So you become more skilled in that particular area, whether it be application pen testing, whether it be um, network pen testing, whether it be operating system pen testing. I mean, you could go, um, there's, there's more areas you can sort of specialize in. Um, you know, you could be a specialist in IoT, Internet of Things type devices, because they could be a, a little bit different in regards to how do you test those things. Some of the concepts of pen testing are very similar. The way I look at things is, here's an example. If I want to know about um, Linux or Windows, in my past job history, I was not able to get Linux jobs because I spent a lot of time working with Windows. But a lot of people who, when they question me about, you know, specific capabilities of a system or a typical question on job interview is tell me five two word commands for Linux. I didn't know them because I was not a Linux expert. But if I could look those things up on Google, I could tell you what they do and run that command probably faster than someone who could answer that question. To me, I look at operating systems are similar. Networking systems, whether it's 
Cisco, Juniper are similar. Firewalls are very similar. A network-based firewall and a host-based firewall are very similar. They have differences, but they operate very similarly. And I look at it because I went back and got a master's in computer engineering. I learned from the systematic viewpoint how these things work, not necessarily from the application uh, viewpoint in. I look for sort of like, you know, well, how did the core of this work? And then I could branch out from there. So my perspective is always going to be different than every, everyone else's. And that's that's great. Your perspective is going to be different as well. I would say if you don't already know the different types of pen testing, because we only went into the basic here, do a little bit more research on what that is. Reach out to a couple people, maybe like people on our team, or yeah, I'm happy to connect with anybody and help answer any questions. And I know our team, Jonathan and Clara, are happy to do that too. Do some more research to find out what you think you might like. Because once you get involved with the computer or technology space, it's very broad. And a lot of things look a lot the same as I described, but there's a tremendous amount of speciality, much like a doctor in a hospital, right? You probably don't want a brain doctor operating on someone's ankle. And I'll, hopefully I'll leave it there. Hopefully that answered your question. Other questions, we have five minutes left if people wanna fill them with questions. Um, anybody have any insights, any experiences that they, they would like to share? Have you been through a pen test yourself? Were you aware that the pen test was going to happen or was it a surprise to you? Was it performed by the internal team or was it, or or did your company farm it out to an external um, team? Actually, David, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Um, is there a, a trend in the industry around whether pen tests are done by external teams or or done under the cloak of darkness um, by internal teams? I think there's both. I don't think there's any specific trend. I think it depends on the leaders and companies what they're um, what they're able to you know sort of like advocate for as part of their overall company's security strategy. It could be a good sort of approach to do it under the cloak of darkness. But if you are not prepared when you perform a pen test and the pen testers may maybe take your system offline because they made a request your application that filled up your application logs and your application logs then filled up your hard disk, which took down your server, if you were not prepared for that, you could either say, hey, that took our system offline and cost us some money. Or you could look at it and say, we were not prepared for that event to happen. And not only did it test test our strength and configuration of our environment, but it also showed that we were not able to react to this condition. And we need to do a better job of making sure our people are well-trained, understand more about how our systems work, and then have the capability to monitor and alert in effective manner to mitigate a failure from occurring. So you can really look at it in many different ways. That's great. I, I like that. That's really good. Uh, any any final thoughts or comments? Otherwise, we can close this. And I can thank everyone for um, for 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 joining us for this past hour. Uh, it has been very insightful. I hope you guys have found it helpful in terms of wh where what you're thinking in terms of your career path, uh, your current job, whatever it may be. Um, we we shared with you contact at cyberwarrior.com for an email that you can reach out to us with any questions. Um, to, to get a copy of this recording, uh, to ask us about our our um, our lessons and our and our and our micro courses on pen testing and vulnerability management, I strongly encourage you to to consider those because um, they they really are uh, helpful in terms of understanding pen testing and being able to to um, effectively communicate your knowledge um, to hiring managers to colleagues. Uh, whoever that may be. Um, so with that, I want to thank you. I want to thank David. I want to thank Clara. And I look forward to hopefully um, seeing many of you in the future at a future uh, webinar on a, on a future masterclass, or we have them every, every, every month, uh, or um, perhaps in one of our courses down the road. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day and happy Thanksgiving to everybody.